Hello, everybody. Welcome to After Further Review. I'm your host, Steve Tower, and tonight we are bringing season... Uh, the NL Cy Young Award winner, Doug Drabeck, uh, did not start game one. Uh, he, had, he had to pitch earlier uh, uh, at the end of the season uh, for the Pirates to, um, <laughs> to close out the season, so he was not available. Uh, and so they had Bob Walk... Uh, come out to make the start, and uh, even though he got roughed up in the first uh, and gave up three runs, that was all he gave up, and the Pirates ended up winning the game 4-3, to three, uh, thanks in part to a two-run homer by Sid Bream, uh, and then a, uh, a misplayed ball by Eric Davis in left field that led to a ground rule double uh, that was the go-ahead run. Uh, so let's see if we can rewrite history. And uh, as uh, Brandon Baker in the chat room says, let's get nasty. Uh, and uh, here we go, folks. Join me here in uh, beautiful Riverfront Stadium. <laughs> beautiful. Boy, I, I rewatched the video. Uh, somebody has posted all of the 1990 NLCS on YouTube. <laughs> that carpet <laughs> in Riverfront Stadium was terrible. Oh, my God. It looked absolutely terrible there was water stains in it um but a uh, historic stadium a lot of history there uh let's see if we can recreate some here tonight so um the last time that i used season ticket baseball i um i didn't use any of the additional rules so tonight we're going to add uh, a couple of things uh first off uh we are going to be uh doing the weather uh, so, uh, right here on the stadium charts, you will see there's a handy-dandy weather chart. Um, and what this will do, it'll tell you if, um, if there is rain, uh, if there's temperature uh, that uh, could lead to the, uh, the power rolls and deep drives being less or plus. Uh, and then we're also going to roll for wind uh, to see if that affects anything. So first we're going to see what the temperature is. Here, this is a, an evening game in October. So uh, the base temperature is 42. We'll roll all three dice. Uh, so it's going to be 42, let's see, uh, 50, 56. So 56 degrees here at first pitch means that there will be no adjustment to the deep drive chart. Um, Historically, there was no rain, so actually we're gonna um, we will skip the uh, the rain roll. Uh, we'll use the historical weather, um, but we will roll for the wind, uh, and we get a fifteen. So fifteen, the wind is blowing. Uh, let's see, from right field to left field. Uh, so that means that any um, any drive to left field is gonna be plus one. I'm just gonna make a little note here so I don't forget. And then any drive into right field is gonna be minus one on the chart. So a, uh, a clear night, a little bit of wind. Um, but other than that, we are ready to go. Uh, so uh, 14 game winner, Jose Rijo is out on the mound uh, and Wally Backman playing at third base for the Pirates. He is going to lead things off. Uh, the other additional rule that we are going to be using tonight uh, is for players playing out of position. Uh, so for the Reds tonight, uh, they had Eric Davis in left field and Billy Hatcher in center field, which was not the position that they played in the most. Uh, so there is, um, so anytime we get a, uh, a 500 roll, uh, that goes to either left field or center field, uh, we are going to be using, uh, this chart here, uh, from the rule book for, um, for players in their, uh, secondary position. So with that all out of the way, let's go. Uh, it is the Reds taking on the Pirates for the NL pennant. And we are ready to go. Uh, and a uh, shout out to everyone in the chat room joining me here. Dale, uh, Dave Gardner listening on his way home from the rink. <laughs> Dave, uh, appreciate you uh, tuning in uh, to hear the audio version. Uh, let's see, Brandon Baker and uh, Robert Bryan in the chat room. Uh, and away we go. 
Riho kicks, delivers, and we are underway. So we'll read the dice, uh, red, white, and blue order. So 583, uh, and there we go, right away, we are going to be checking in center field. Uh, so normally for uh, the center fielder, we would just read the chart on the center fielder's chart, but because Billy Hatcher is playing at center field, uh, we will use um, those rules. So what we're going to be looking at is the range uh, for uh, the center fielder. So in center field, Billy Hatcher, he actually only has a range of four. Uh, however, we got lucky. Uh, so what we're looking at is the blue die. And if the blue die is below, uh, if it's equal or lower than the fielder's range, then it is just an out. So Hatcher is going to track down the fly ball into center field for the first out of the game. There we go. And then that'll bring up Jay Bell batting second, playing short for the Bucks. And we get a 630, so that will take us to the Riverfront Stadium chart. Uh, a 630 is going to be an F6. So Bell will fly out to Larkin. He will backpedal into the outfield a little bit. Get that for the second out. And now Andy Van Slyke, the center fielder for Pittsburgh. Uh, a 6-14, and he is going to get jammed, and he will pop out to Duncan at second. One, two, three, go the Bucks, And we'll head to the bottom of the first. There is no score. All right, so Bob Walk uh, will get the start for Pittsburgh. Uh, he was not uh, the choice that everybody thought was going to start this game, uh, but start the game nonetheless he did and actually ended up historically getting the win. Uh, let's see how he does here. Barry Larkin, the Hall of Famer Barry Larkin, will lead things off for Cincinnati. And we get a 3-0-2, and Barry Larkin is going to go down swinging. One down. And here comes Billy Hatcher. Billy Hatcher arrived in Cincinnati with a trade via trade from Houston. Uh, we saw Billy Hatcher on our last show uh, with our What If World Series, where uh, we had Houston actually make the World Series. Uh, let's see, and a 573 is going to go to the left fielder, which is none other than Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds, a very good left fielder in this. So 573 is going to be just a fly out into left field. F7 if you're scoring at home. And now here comes Hal Morris playing at first base and batting third. For Cincinnati, 669 is the roll. Uh, with 600 rolls, when the home team is batting, we will add five. So 674 uh, is going to be a wild pitch. <laughs> so Bob Walk will uncork one. Uh, that will go to the backstop, but with nobody on base, no big deal. So we'll re-roll the dice. And uh, 578, so that's going to be another fly ball into left field. Uh, but 578, Bonds is not going to be able to track it down. So Morris will get aboard with the first hit of the game. All right, runner at first, two down. And here comes Eric the Red. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, Brandon, we will not ever forget that hitting streak of uh, Billy Hatcher, which I believe is still the record for the most consecutive hits in a World Series. Uh, and the only way that it was stopped was when he got plunked on the hand in Game 4 of the World Series and had to be taken out. All right, so here comes Eric Davis, runner on first, two out. Can Davis get a hold of one? Uh, and we roll a 520. So that's going to go to the catcher start. That is Mike... Uh, Lavalier uh, behind the plate and a 520. He is going to frame it for a strikeout. 
So Bob Walk, he pitches around. Uh, that hits. No runs, one hit, one runner left on. And after one full, there is no score here from Riverfront Stadium. We have a clear, cool night here in downtown Cincinnati. 56 degrees at first pitch. Let's see what happens. Jose Rio will face the heart of the order for the Buckos. Bonilla, Bonds, and Bream. Let's see. 4, 46 to Bonilla uh, facing a, a right-hander. He is going to drive a double into the gap and get himself right into scoring position to lead things off in the second inning. And here comes, uh, who uh, would go on to win his first MVP, <coughs> Barry Bonds, a svelte Barry Bonds. Um, <laughs> Bonds, who hit 33 home runs this year uh, and uh, 52 stolen bases. Let's see if he can drive in uh, the first run of the game. Two, four, five. Uh, this is going to be a grounder to second. Uh, let's see. So that means that Bonilla is going to advance to third on the ground out to the right-hand side of the infield. So I guess Jim Leland will probably be happy with that, but maybe want a little bit more. Let's see. I, uh, we're not going to bring the infield in. It's too early for that. We'll see if Riho can... Set down the next two batters. Sid Bream coming up now. 4-15. Uh, and he is going to draw a walk against a righty. He draws a walk. He would have struck out against a left-hander. All right. But that just sets up the double play. So we've got runners at the corners for the catcher, Mike Lavalier. Let's see what he does. 3-8. Teen is the roll, and oh boy, that is going to be an infield single. He hits a Baltimore chop, and everybody is going to advance. And the first run of the game goes to Pittsburgh on an infield single by the catcher. Uh oh, and Rio suddenly in trouble here. In the top of the second. Now the second baseman, Jose Lind, will step up. Runners at first and second. One out, one run already in. Hoping for a double play here. Uh, four, oh, three. And that is going to be a strikeout. So Lind strikes out for the second out. And now the pitcher, Bob Walk, will step up to the plate with two out. See if he can help out his own cause. I don't think he will. 2.53 uh, is going to be a ground out to third. Uh, Sabo will throw to Duncan at second for the force. And that will end the inning, but not before. Or that will end the top of the inning, not before the Buckos. Get across a run and they lead it one to nothing. And Cincinnati will have uh, their five, six, and seven batters due up here in the bottom half. Yes, Jose Rijo, the son in law of Juan Marichal. For sure. A uh, lot of history. <laughs> In this series, it, again, it was it was fun watching uh, the video um, of game one of this, uh, and there was uh, some interviews with uh, I think Pete Rose's brother um, was uh, interviewed at the beginning of this game. Uh, Pete Rose, who was serving um, time for his gambling, and people were were talking about how that might affect the team. And, uh, of course, we had Lou Pinella, who was managing the Reds, uh, and the big deal of him that he was, you know, coming, he was an, an American League guy, and now suddenly managing a National League team. How would that work out? And 
as we all know historically, it, it worked out pretty well. Um, but yeah, just just a special team, this 1990 Cincinnati Red Squad. All right, here we go. Paul O'Neill uh, will lead things off. Paul O'Neill, of course, who would go on to uh, play for the Yankees and win a, a couple more World Series. But here uh, in his age 27 season uh, with the Reds. 6, 69. Uh, so we'll add 5 because he is a, a home player. Uh, so 674, that will be another wild pitch by Bob Watt, but gets away with it because there's nobody on base. So Paul O'Neill still up at the plate. 2, 1, 6. Let's see, 2, 1, 6 to a lefty is going to be a ground out to short. So O'Neill is... Down on an easy grounder, and now here comes Chris Sabo. Chris Sabo, who would lead the Reds in home runs in 1990 with 25. Um, <laughs> Scott Johnson joins us. Uh, oh, and uh, David Baseball Demos. Welcome, Dave. Uh, let's see, is he going to have to buy another baseball card and dice game? I, I think you are. Yes, uh, a season ticket is... Um, I, I've, I've really fallen in love with this game. Well, and the best part is, of course, if you did not see my uh, previous video, is you can download the rules. Uh, you can download um, the 1975 and the 1986 playoff teams, all of the playoff teams, uh, including their stadium cards, all the player cards, uh, absolutely for free um, to see if it is a game that you want. And then uh, there are... A whole bunch of seasons available uh, to purchase as a PDF. Uh, there are a couple um, of printed sets. I think it's something that um, uh, that Chris Dreslock, the designer, is trying to um, uh, to get more in stock. Um, but uh, PDF download uh, for most of the seasons, I, I want to say 1950 on, they are all available. So, um, all right, and yes, <laughs> grab your specs. Because Spuds is up to bat. Here we go. Sabo, one out, uh, nobody on. Four, ooh, 466. Oh, that is going to be a ground out to short as well. All right, so two down, nobody on. Uh, and if you have not seen the video, do yourself a favor and Google... Um, uh, Red Hot. It's <laughs> it was a video that the Reds did, uh, kind of in the vein of the Super Bowl Shuffle, and uh, oh boy, it is it is so cringy that is good. <laughs> uh, I I just discovered that today thanks to a Twitter thread uh, that I was following. Uh, all right, so here we go. Jeff Reed uh, doing the catching. Uh, Jeff Reed would uh, would be platooning this year with Joe Oliver uh, behind the plate, but he would get the start in Game One here of the NLCS. Four thirty six. Let's see, four thirty six. That is going to be a ground out to the second baseman, and one two three. Go the Reds here in the second, and it is one to nothing as we head to. The third inning. Um, <laughs> there we go. Brandon knows what I'm talking about. The Red Hot <laughs> rap video. Oh, boy. it's. <laughs> it, trust me. If you haven't seen it, you, you really have to. Uh, all right. So the Buckos uh, will be back to the top of their order to start uh, the third inning. Wally Backman flew out in his first at-bat. Two, three, four is the roll. That is going to be a grounder to Larkin. At short, he will throw on to Morris to get the out. One down. Here comes Jay Bell. Uh, Jay Bell popped out to Larkin. In his first at bat. Five ninety-eight. Oh, so we are going to be going into right field. Uh, so Paul O'Neill. Oh, in a five ninety-eight. That is going to be a uh, a long single, uh, but with nobody on base. That won't uh, really matter for any runners, but Jay Bell gets a hit. Uh, so the third hit given up. Uh, let's see. Um, Jay Bell did score or steal 10 bases. 
let's see if he gets a lead. Um, so his steel rating is three. Um, and Rio only has a hold rating of two. So we're trying to uh, get a total of 10. Um, so three, uh, and they will. So uh, he will get a lead. And uh, I guess we'll send him. So let's see, the arm of Jeff Reed, he has an arm rating of four. So trying to beat four. 14, uh, his, let's see, do, do, do his speed is four. We'll roll all three dice. Oh, and he rolls really low, and Jay Bell is going to get picked off. Trying to steal second base. Oh, boy. All right. Jeff Reed just guns him down. All right, so Andy Van Slyke up now. Uh, Van Slyke, uh, let's see, he flew out to second base his first time up. 274 is the roll, and he is going to strike out. All right, so Riho has kind of settled down. And uh, it will remain one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the third. Eight, nine, and one batters do up for Cincinnati. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, just catching up on the chat. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Dave, uh, the learning for this, um, if you don't add any of the extra rules, very, very simple. Um, so actually, the way that I have laid this out, which I have to give credit to um, Giles uh, Tebow, uh, on his YouTube channel. Uh, please check out his videos if you have not yet. Um, because basically how it goes here is um, the red die um, lets you know what column you are looking at. And one and two go on the pitcher. Three and four <clears throat> go on the batter. Uh, 500 to 509 uh, are rare plays. And then uh, 510 to 599 are going to be fielders. So you'd look at the <coughs> the, the fielder chart on uh, the opposite team. And then 600s will uh, take you to the, um, the stadium chart. Uh, and if you just want to do that, um, uh, it you know really it's it's print and play. Um, and then there are um, there's a, a quick start card. Uh, that's just two-sided, that gives you pretty much everything you need to know to get going. Uh, and then there is a double-sided chart uh, for offensive strategies and defensive strategies. Uh, and then you can sort of add in things as you, uh, as you like, like we did with the weather, with the wind. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's a really, really easy game to, uh, to jump into. So all right, so here we go. We are in the bottom of the third. Mariano Duncan will lead things off. Bob Walk having himself a good night with a one-hitter here through two innings. 484 is the roll, and he is going to get Duncan to fly out to deep center field for the first out. So Jose Rijo will come up for his first at-bat. Let's see how he does. 173. Um, well, <laughs> Bob Walk's going to uncork another wild pitch, but again, he does it with nobody on base. So we will re roll. Let's see. 603 uh, will become 608, uh, which won't even matter. But, uh, so Riho will strike out for the second out of the inning. We'll. Flip the lineup over uh, back to the top. Barry Larkin come back up. He is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. 463 is going to be a ground out too short. And 1, 2, 3 go the Reds. 
They have not made much noise, and Bob Walk looking good through three. It is one to nothing. Pittsburgh still on top. Uh, yes, what a name for a pitcher. <laughs> for sure. Um, and, uh, boy, if, if you do rewatch the video of um, that game, one of the NLCS, Bob Walk, I'm not saying that he cheated, but he... Uh, he has a very, very dirty ball cap by uh, by like the fourth inning. Um, <laughs> his his cap is just covered with with uh, with white from uh, the rosin bag and whatever he whatever else he was using that um, that got his <laughs> that got his hand sticky but hey he did the job uh he got things done and he's getting things done here uh, as clay joins us in the chat room welcome clay thank you for tuning in we got ourselves a good a good game going here it is one to nothing pittsburgh on top as we head into the top of the fourth uh and we have the heart of the order for the pirates coming up bonilla bonds and bream 201 is the roll uh, so 201 is uh, one of those where we we're gonna go to the batter's card. Uh, so it'll be it'll turn into a 401, uh, and a 401 against a righty uh, for Bonilla is gonna be a walk. So Bonilla draws a leadoff walk, and here comes the 1990 MVP Barry Bonds. Uh, Bonds ground out in his first at bat, but he did advance uh, Bonilla, who eventually came around to score. Let's see if Riho can uh, pitch around this. 455 is the roll, and that is going to be a double. Uh-oh. So that is going to put runners at second and third. And Riho is in trouble. Oh boy. All right, so we are gonna bring the infield in. Uh, one of the options here on the defensive strategy, uh, which is um, the first one here. So uh, any of these uh, results here, we will um, go to this chart here. All right, so here we go. Sid Bream up. Riho sweating. Nobody out. Runners at second and third. Can Pittsburgh break this game open? Uh, six, 67. Uh, let's see. Oh, no. Uh, so a 667 would normally be uh, a grounder uh, to short and a force at second. But... Um, with the infield playing in, it turns into a single plus, uh, which means that both runners are going to score. Oh, no. So Bream gets a two-run single uh, to make it 3 nothing. Uh, Sid Bream in... Uh, in the real game would get a huge uh, home run. Uh, I believe in the, boy, actually, was it the fourth inning <laughs> that Sid Bream uh, got that hit? Um, I think it might've been uh, that tied the game. All right, so, but uh, now uh, the Bucks are on top, three to nothing. Uh, Mike Lavalier will come up to bat. Uh, let's see. He had an RBI single. There is nobody out, and two runs are already in. 4-1-4, four, four, and he is going to draw a walk from uh, Rio. And the first four batters have reached base. Oh, no. Uh, I think we're going to get a little action in the Reds' bullpen. Um and one of the nasty boys, Norm Charlton, he is going to uh, start getting warmed up out there in the pen as he might uh, need to, <laughs> to come in a little earlier than Lupinella would like. Oh, boy. 
Um, all right, here we go. And ID Jester joins us in the chat room. Welcome. Thanks for uh, joining us here. Hope you're having a good Friday. Uh, here we go. Yes, it's Jose Walk and Bob Rijo. <laughs> they switched places. All right, so two on, nobody out, and two runs already in. Uh, let's see. Jose Linz uh, struck out in his first at bat. 174. That is going to be another walk. And the bases are full of buckos. Nobody out. And here comes the pitcher, Bob Walk. Uh, he is absolutely going to uh, to try to bunt. Uh, well, I, oh boy, I don't know, actually. Let's see, because... I guess then they would bring the corners in. Uh, let's see. So if you bring the corners in on a bunt, it adds three to the arm rating for any challenge rolls. Um, all right. Because uh, Bob Walk actually a pretty good bunter. He has a five bunt rating. All right. So here we go. He will try to lay it down, and he is going to have, let's see, five. Oh, boy. Uh, so 12, uh-oh, 12, what's 19, 24. Uh, so that he's going to bunt it to third, and I don't think that... All right, so all let's see, all runners advance. The batter is out. If oh, okay, so we we do add three. All right, so we might get a double play. So I guess I'd, they'd sacrifice the run. Uh, Bob Walk's speed is a zero. So we're just trying to beat a ten. Sabo's arm. Let's see, Sabo's arm. Oh, it's only a one. All right, so trying to beat a 10. So one plus all three dice. Uh, and yes, they do. All right, so they'll get the double play. Uh, five, four, three. Um, a run will come in. And we'll end up with a runner at third base. Uh, let's see. So Bream will come in to score. Uh, Lavalier will go to third, and Lind will be out on the double play. All right, so two outs, runner at third, three runs in. We'll go to the top of the order. Four nothing game, Pittsburgh on top. Backman up to bat, 508, and we are going to go to the rare play chart for the first time. Uh, and I did print out the rare play chart, so <laughs> we won't have the rare play chart blocking the screen. Uh, all right, so we have a runner on third with two outs. Uh, means it's just going to the regular rare play chart. All right. Um, all right, so we'll roll all three dice. Uh, 433, 433, um, oh no, 433 is going to be, uh, batter is safe at first on a throwing error by the third baseman, runners advance two bases, and the batter can try to advance the second base by challenging the right fielder's arm, uh, wow. All right, so, oh no, so a run's going to come in on an E5. And then Backman could try, let's see, what is uh, Paul O'Neill's arm is a four, and Backman has a speed of four. Oh, I don't think he wants to make the last out of the inning at second base. All right, so he will just stay there. And, oh, no, it is now 5 nothing. Pittsburgh on top. And, yes, Pittsburgh needs to... Uh, 
<laughs> or uh, Sabo needs to clean his goggles. Oh, no. That was a bad time. That could have been an inning-ending inning ending, uh, ground out, but the inning continues now. Here comes Jay Bell uh, looking for his second hit of the game. 177. He is going to draw a walk, and oh, no. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, so now Van Slyke is up, and wow. I think that we're going to have to pull Jose Rio. Oh, early. Yikes. Let's see. Um, oh, we'll let him face Van Slyke to try to get out of this. Uh, and if anything else happens, then uh, Charlton will come in. Come on, Rio. Oh, my goodness. Uh, five. 34, so that is going to go to the first baseman, Hal Morris. Uh, 534 will be a three unassisted. And whew, we get out of the inning. They almost batted around. Um, but they push across four runs. Wow, on one, two, three hits. Um, two walks and an error. Oh boy. All right. So five, nothing as we head to the bottom of the fourth. And now Bob walk has a, uh, a nice cushion and he'll face the two, three and four batters of the reds and Bob walk, uh, still with a one hit shutout going on. 629 becomes a 634 will be a fly out to center field. So Hatch goes down. One out, nobody on for Hal Morris. Morris uh, one uh, has that one hit of the game for the Reds. 291. 291 is, let's see, with a left-hander, it's going to be a deep right field. All right, so... Deep drive into right field. Morris has a power of four. Uh, we'll add that to two D10s, but we're going to subtract one because of the win tonight. So let's see, 10, 14. So it'll be 13. Uh, we'll become a fly out to right field. Um, and even without the win, it still would have been a fly out to right field. So. All right. Two down. Nobody on for Eric the Red. Eric struck out in his first appearance, 541. Uh, so we're going to the second baseman. Uh, 541 will just be a ground out. Four, three, and one, two, three. Go the Reds. Nothing doing here in the fourth. And they still trail five to nothing. Oh, boy. All right, so here we are in the fifth. Um, Bobby Bonilla going to lead things off. All right, we'll see. Because uh, Jose Rio, he is, um, his stamina is five. Uh, and he's given up five runs. Let's see if he can get an out here before we bring Charlton in uh, to face Bonds. 149, that will be a ground out to second base. And he does get the out. And now here comes Barry Bonds, and Pinella will come out and make the call to the pen. So Charlton will come in with one out. Nobody on here in the fifth. Riho, a rough, <laughs> a rough game. Oh, boy. Uh, he will go four and a third. Uh, four hits, five runs. Uh, let's see, but only four of them earned um, because of that error on Sabo. All right, so here comes Charlton. Bases empty, one out for Barry Bonds. Bonds uh, with a double and a run scored. 2 0 8 uh, will become a 4 0 8. And uh, Bonds will draw a walk. All right, 
right, so Bonds is on base for the second time tonight. Um, and let's see if he will try to steal. He's going to try to get a lead. Uh, 11, oh boy, yeah, 20, <laughs> 27. He will definitely get a lead and try to steal. All right, let's see. Uh, his steal rating is 5. Oh, but we roll a, let's see, 6, 11. What is the arm of Reed? Uh, oh, we needed to be to 14, so Reed is going to throw him out at second. All right, so uh, the Pirates are 0 for 2 on stolen base attempts. Uh, it has not hurt them yet, but... All right, so Bream up now with the bases empty, two down. Uh, 121 will become a 321, which is a strikeout. All right, so one, two, three goes Pittsburgh in the top of the fifth. We'll head to the bottom half. Still five, nothing. Pittsburgh on top. As Dave Gardner has arrived at home. And he can join us now watching the video. All right. So here in the fifth, it will be the five, six, and seven batters coming up. Uh, Bob Walk is cruising. Uh, so Bob Walk, he actually only has a stamina of four. Uh, so uh, any any hits, uh, well, actually any runner getting on now will uh, add a point of fatigue. Uh, he did go... Um, uh, let's see. Oh, no, we're in the fifth. Okay. So here we go. 553. So we're going to go to uh, the shortstop. Karn, uh, J. Bell. Or no, sorry. Uh, 53. Uh, third base. So that'll be Backman. Uh, 53 will just be a ground out to third baseman. So O'Neill, the first out of the inning. Here comes Spuds. Sabo 0 for 1 with a ground out. Uh, 5, 23. That will, oh, handily will be right there on Mike Lavalier's card. 5, 23 will be a strikeout. Sabo goes down swinging. Here comes Jeff Reed. Jeff Reed 0 for 1. 189 uh, is going to be a bloop single. So the inning continues. Just the second hit given up by Bob Walk. Uh, here comes Mariano Duncan. Uh, Duncan 0 for 1 with a fly out. 283. 283 is going to be a deep drive into left field. Uh, left field is where the wind is uh, blowing out. So we will add 1 to the roll. Duncan with a power of five. He did have 10 home runs. All right. So uh, let's see. 16 uh, plus six is 22, which means that is a two-run bomb. Mariano Duncan far deep into the left field stands. It is out of here, and the Reds are on the board. Thanks to a two-out homer by Mariano Duncan. All right, it will not be a shutout. All right, so let's see. Oh, I forgot to mark the second out. Uh, oh, let's see. So now with a pitcher spot due up. Oh, boy. I guess we will have to pinch hit. I hate to with two out and nobody on, but... Um, so we will pinch hit, um, and we'll have, let's see, in the bullpen. We don't want to bring Myers in yet. Um, I guess we'll have Dibble ready to come in. Let's see, where do we, we're at the bottom of the order. All right, I think actually we'll have um, Rick Mahler will be ready for... Uh, the Reds and uh, Herm Winningham will come in to pinch hit for Norm Charlton. So Winningham 
Uh, batted 256 on the season for the Reds. So Charlton will go uh, just two thirds of an inning uh, with no hits, uh, a walk, and a strikeout. All right, so here we go. Herm Winningham up. Let's see if he can get this going. 3 0 oh, 2. Uh, he will not keep it going. He will strike out for the third out of the inning. All right, so there we go. Bob Watt gets through uh, that inning, uh, but does give up a couple of hits, including a big two run homer. Uh, and so the Reds back in it. It is five to two as we head to the sixth inning. Uh, and we will have a new pitcher for Cincinnati, Rick Mahler. Uh, Rick Mahler, who he went seven and six on the season for Cincinnati, uh, did have four saves, uh, a four two eight ERA. He'll be facing the seven eight nine batters. Uh, for Cincinnati. Oh, and actually, I forgot. Uh, Bob Walk will now have uh, two fatigue uh, because of the two hits that he gave up. So, all right. So here we go. Top of the uh, top of the six. Mahler in his first inning of work. Three, three, four. He's going to get Mike Lavalier to fly out to left field. Davis tracks that down. One out, nobody on for Jose Lind. Jose Lind, uh, one for two on the night with a single and a strikeout. Uh, and he is going to strike out for the second time. Two quick outs. Uh, the pitcher spot coming up. Hmm. Let's see. I feel like... Getting five out of Bob Walk is probably good enough for them because uh, he would be fatigued going into the next inning, and it's the top of the order coming up. So, yes, they will. They're going to make a call to the pen. Uh, well, I guess first they will have a pinch hitter up. Uh, and against the righty, Mahler. Uh, let's see. Do they have a good lefty on the mound? Well, they have a couple of switch hitters. Let's see. I guess they'll have a uh, John uh, Cangalosi will come on. They'll save R.J. Reynolds for a time if there's a, a runner on base. All right. So, all right. So two out, nobody on, and a pinch hitter at the plate. Six thirty-seven will be a fly out to center field. So Mahler. Gets a clean inning and keeps it a three-run game. And now we'll head to the bottom of the six. Uh, let's see. For the Bucks, um, they have a lot of options uh, from the pen. I think, let's see, with um, got two righties coming up right now. I guess I'll, uh, Stan Belinda will come in to pitch for them. So uh, Bob Walk, he will go five innings. Uh, giving up those two runs on the homer by Duncan. Had been doing really well. Had a one-hitter <laughs> shutout going. Um but then a, uh, a single by Reed, and then a, a two-run, two-out bomb by Duncan. The bottom of the order getting it done. Uh, let's see if the top of the order can get something going against Stan Belinda. Larkin steps in for 98, uh, and that is going to be a strikeout. So Larkin goes down. Uh, he is now 0 for 3 on the evening. Hatch steps up to the plate. He is 0 for 2. 5, 16. So it'll be uh, right on the uh, the pitcher's card. 
And a 516 is going to be a single into center field. All right, so Hatcher aboard. Here comes Hal Morris. He is one for two, righty versus lefty here. Four, 17 uh, is going to be a single into center field. And uh, let's see. Hatcher could try to test the arm of the center fielder. He could try to test the arm of Van Slyke, who has an arm of four, but Hatcher with a speed of six to get runners at the corners. I think he's going to go. All right, so uh, Hatcher... So we're going to be trying to beat um, a total of 14. So speed of 6 plus, oh, there we go. That will definitely beat it. So Hatcher will motor around to third. And we've got runners at the corners now for Eric the Red. And the crowd will come to its feet. Riverfront Stadium starts to roar. These fans have been waiting for something like this to happen. Let's see. Here we go. Eric Davis with that very unorthodox batting stance that everybody imitated when they were playing wiffle ball. Here we go. Belinda gets the sign. Kicks. Delivers. 380 is the roll. 380 uh, is going to be an error on the shortstop. And uh, let's see. With the the two parentheses, does that mean that it's a two base error? Uh, it is. Oh, my goodness. So, um, all right. So that means... Uh, that Hatcher will come in to score. Uh, Morris will go to third. And Davis is on with the error. Oh, boy. Uh, so Bell gets eaten up <laughs> with a hard grounder by Davis. And now the tying run is on base. Paul O'Neill steps up to the plate. Um, with uh, representing the go-ahead run. And the Riverfront fans are screaming. Here we go. Paul O'Neill digs in. He is 0 for 2 on the night. Here is the pitch. 4, 14. Uh, oh, my goodness. He is going to line out to second base. And I believe the R1 exclamation point means that, oh no, means that Davis is going to get doubled up at first. Oh, it's an inning ending double play. O'Neill lines it, a hard screaming liner to Lind, who snags it, throws it to Bream, who doubles off Davis. Wow. Oh, talk about a rally killer. Ouch. All right. So there we go. They do get a run. Uh, oh, ooh, that is that is painful, folks, if you're a, a Cincinnati fan. Uh, and Pittsburgh gets a, uh, a break for sure. It is five to three as we head to the top of the seventh inning. Uh, we'll let Mahler stay out there. Uh, for a little bit. He has a stamina rating of two, uh, but Rob Dibble will be uh, ready to come out of the pen. Uh, we are back to the top of the order. Wally Backman up. He is 0 for 2, but has reached on an error. Mahler kicks, delivers. 460 uh, is going to be a single. Wally Backman, a switch hitter. Gets a leadoff single here in the top of the seventh. One on now. Nobody out for Jay Bell. Uh, Bell two for three on the night. 
Uh, 6, 17. Uh, oh, and he is going to get jammed. He will pop out to Duncan, uh, who drifts out into the outfield grass a couple of steps and snags it for the first out. Now Rick Mahler up, or uh, Andy Van Slyke up, rather. Uh, one out, one on. A two-run game. Mahler doing some good work here out of the pen. 3-16 is the roll. That is going to be a strikeout. And a big second out. And now here comes Bobby Bonilla. I think we're going to let Mahler face him. He is doing good work here. All right, two out, one on. Mahler gets a sign that he likes, kicks, delivers, 630. That is going to be a pop-out to Larkin at short. He drifts back, makes the catch, uh, and Mahler holds them. Uh, uh, doesn't give up another run after that leadoff single by Backman. All right, so here we go. It is the seventh inning stretch. That means that is uke time. <laughs> here we go. Sing along at home if you like. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanut and cracker jack. I don't care if I ever get back, so let's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're around at the old ball game. All right, there we go. Always good to get baseball on the channel because that means that I get to break out my ukulele. All right, so uh, we are now in the bottom of the seventh. It is a 5-3 game. Uh, and we got Sabo, Reed, and Duncan who are due up. Uh, so Belinda, uh, who pitched the sixth inning, he actually has a stamina of zero. And he gave up, let's see, um, three batters reached. So he would actually have a fatigue of three. So I think that they are going to go to their bullpen. Uh, the Pirates had a lot of <laughs> um, pitchers on their roster. Uh, let's see, who do they want to bring in? They have a lot of lefties left in their pen, but uh, with Sabo up, I feel like they want us. Well, maybe they'll bring in power. Uh, Bill Landrum, who is technically their closer, uh, with thirteen save. Yeah, I guess they'll bring in Ted Power, and they'll save. Um, they'll save Landrum from late for later. So. Um, Belinda only goes one inning. All right, Ted Power, the former Cincinnati Red. Uh, hey, uh, thank you for the super chat, Brandon Baker. Awesome, thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> All right, and uh, RJL uh, joins us here. Um, thanks, Robert, for tuning in. And oh, absolutely no problem. Uh, that happens. Free baseball over on your network. Um, Absolutely. Oh. All right. So let's see here. With uh, Sabo coming up to bat, uh, Sabo not having a good night. He has an error, and he is 0 for 2. Let's see if he can change that here. 568. So that means we are going to the shortstops card, um, which is – oh, no, that's actually – I'm going to be back over here. Jay Bell. Uh, 68 is going to be a single into left field. And there is much rejoicing as Chris Sabo gets his first hit of the NLCS. All right. Uh, and Sabo actually did have 25 stolen bases on the year. He was a 25-25 club member. Um, 
Hmm. And we're at the bottom of the order. Let's see if he can get a jump. Uh, Ted Power with a hold of four. Uh, let's see if we get eight, nine, 10, 13, uh, 17. He will get a jump and we're gonna send him. He has a steel rating of five. Uh, ooh, boy. And Lavalier have with an arm rating of five. All right, well, no guts, no glory. Well, or actually, maybe we'll do a, um, hmm. No, we'll, uh, we'll go with a steal. All right, so Sabo with a jump. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh. And he is toast. Oh, not even close. He will get thrown out for the first out. Oh, boy. All right. So now Jeff Reed up, one out, nobody on. Oh, so much for that. Oh, all right, here we go. Uh, 209 uh, is going to turn into a 409, which is a walk. So Reed draws a walk and guess who is coming up to bat? Mariano Duncan, who got that big two run homer uh, back in the uh, fifth inning. And a two-run homer here would tie the game. Let's see what happens. 686, uh, because he is a on the home team, becomes a 691. Is going to be a first base uh, plus plus. Let's see, which means that Reed will end up at third. Oh, and that would have scored Sabo. Oh, no. All right, so we got runners at the corners, and uh, with the pitching spot due up, we will tell Rick Mahler he did a great job and end his evening. And uh, let's see who we have left. Uh, hmm. We'll bring Ron uh, Oyster out. Uh Ron, a uh, infielder um, for a veteran infielder for the Reds. Um, and anybody who's a big um, history buff, Ron Oyster, he was the one who, um, when the Reds started slumping, uh, I think they went on like a nine game losing streak towards the end of the season. Um, he shaved his head <laughs> as a way to try to break the streak, uh, and, it, and it worked. So. Um, let's see if he can get a huge, huge pinch hit single here, uh, to, uh, maybe, uh, maybe tie the game or at least make it close. All right. So here we go. Power kicks, delivers. Oh no. 620 becomes a 625, which is just going to be a pop out. Oh, two. Uh, oh, actually wait. Uh, Ted power is now given up three hits and he has a stamina of zero. So that means that that becomes a 650. Um, ooh, let's see. So a it actually is gonna be a three six, which I believe is going to score the runner. Um, Yeah, they'll only get this the force out. All right, so that means we'll uh, we'll have a runner at first, um, but a run is going to come in. So Reed comes in to score to make it five four, and uh, uh, they'll get Duncan with the. Force at second and Oyster will reach on the fielder's choice, but a run comes in and we will go back to the top of the order. The tying run now at first base and here comes Barry Larkin. All right. Uh, let's see. Larkin 0 for 3 with two strikeouts trying to avoid the hat trick. Boy, a hit here would be nice. 420 is the roll, and no, he will not get it. He is going to ground out too short. 
for the third out, but they do scrape across a run. So we'll head to the eighth inning, and it is five to four. Pittsburgh still on top. And uh, we are going to get nasty here again as Rob Dibble will come on to start the eighth inning. Rob Dibble versus Barry Bonds. Here we go. Um, and uh, yes, um, Oh gosh, Clay! I just saw your comment. I um, did I count a zero as a ten? Um, because I thought that I rolled it low, and I oh well, all right. But yes, you're right. Anytime you roll a zero or you roll a zero on a ten sided die, it is a zero and not a ten. Sorry if I missed that. Um, all right. So here we go. Dibble versus Bonds, one run game. Uh, 589 is the roll. So uh, it's going to go to Hatcher in center field. And Hatcher not normally a center fielder. So we will go to uh, the chart here. Uh, his range, unfortunately, in center field is only a 4. Uh, so with the blue die, a 9, a uh, range of 4. It's going to be a long single. Uh, his arm... Uh, we will check that now here on the uh, the single chart. His arm is a four in center field, uh, which means that it'll be a, a single plus, uh, but with no runner on base. Will not matter. So Bonds gets on with a leadoff single. Now Sid Bream coming up to the plate. Dibble kicks. Delivers a one, oh no, 194. It's a bloop single, uh, but with uh, less than two outs, uh, the runner will only advance one base. Uh-oh. Dibble not doing his job here. Two on, nobody out. One run game. Come on, Rob. Uh, one, 42. Oh, will be a strikeout. There we go. That's what we needed. All right, one down, two on uh, for Jose Lind. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Lind won for three uh, with a single and two strikeouts. Uh, and he gets a 453, uh, which is uh, going to be a 5 4. So a hard grounder to Sabo. He has to dive to get it. Uh, his only play is to get the force at second base. So does not get the double play, but gets the second out. And uh, so Lind will reach on the fielder's choice. That will bring up the pitcher slot. So we will have another pinch hitter. And uh, this will be a good time to bring in R.J. Reynolds uh, for the Bucks. All right, so R.J. comes in. Uh, he batted 288 for the season uh, with 19 RBIs. And a big situation here. A one-run game. Uh, runners at the corners. Two outs. Rob Dibble on the mound. He kicks. Delivers. Five. 62. So that means it's going to be a ground ball to short. Oh. And a 562 uh, will just be a easy play um, as Larkin grabs it and he will get the force at Second base to pitch out of danger. Oh, boy. So no runs, two hits, two runners left on. And we will head to the bottom of the eighth. It is five to four. Oh, boy. All right. So here in the bottom of the eighth, uh, with the two, three, and four batters coming up, 
So we got a righty, lefty, righty. I think that they're going to bring in, uh, they'll bring in Bill Landrum now. Because here is where the action is. All right, one run game. Let's see what happens. Can the, the Reds scratch across another run? All right, Landrum winds and deals 282. Uh, or sorry, two, yeah, 284 um, is going to be a deep drive into left field. So Hatcher gets a hold of one. Uh, the wind blowing out to left field, so we'll add one uh, to his power. So it'll be a power of four plus the two D10. Uh, let's see. So nine, 13, 17 is going to be a home run. Billy Hatcher gets a hold of one far deep and gone. And we are all tied up at five apiece. Here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Oh boy, so Randy Myers will start getting warmed up in the pen. Oh my goodness. And Riverfront Stadium is chaotic here as the crowd comes to life. Woo. All right, Hal Morris steps in. Landrum. Needs to go to the rosin bag, try to compose himself, comes back, gets a sign he likes, he kicks, delivers. Let's see, 126, that is going to be a strikeout. So he does, in fact, compose himself, comes back, gets the strikeout. One out, doesn't get any easier though. Here comes Eric Davis. Eric the Red hit 24 home runs this year for Cincinnati. Let's see what he does here. 480. Uh, 480 is going to be a triple. Oh, boy. Davis triples into the gap. And the go-ahead run just 90 feet away. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see. Oh, boy. Do they, do they intentionally walk Paul O'Neill? To get to Sabo? I don't think they do. I think maybe... Uh, oh, boy. Hmm. The go-ahead run at third. Let's see. Um, there is a pitch around uh, rule in... Um, the advanced rules or oh, suicide squeeze. Are you kidding? <laughs> Although I will say that was another thing that was funny watching um, the uh, um, the video of of this game historically is in the ninth inning. Lou Pinella basically managed himself out of the game. They got their first two runners on with nobody out, and then. He called for a bunt, which got, got the runner out at third. Uh, had a couple of pinch hitters. Um, uh, yeah, it just in, basically gave up two outs. Oh, boy, yes. I, I cannot do a suicide squeeze. Um, I'm just trying to think for the for Pittsburgh, would they... Uh, well, especially you can't do a suicide squeeze with Paul O'Neill. He only has a bunt rating of two. All right, I guess they'll bring... Um, They'll bring the infield in and then pitch to O'Neill. All right, so here we go. Six, ooh, 6.45. Uh, oh, plus five for the home team is going to make it a 6.50. Oh, how about that? So instead of a, a grounder to first, it's going to get by him with the infield drawn in will be a go-ahead single. And Paul O'Neill gives his team the lead. It is all falling apart for Pittsburgh. All right, so one out, one on. And Landrum has given up two runs here. Oh, my goodness. 
Here we go. All right, let's see if Sabo can keep it going. 605 becomes a 610. No, he will strike out for the second out. And here comes Jeff Reed. Uh, Jeff Reed, who's had himself a good night. He is one for two, a single, a walk, and two runs scored. Uh, let's see, 422. No, he will ground out to second base to end the inning, but the Reds scrape across two runs. Uh, a homer by Billy Hatcher to lead things off, uh, then a triple by Davis, and he gets driven in by Paul O'Neill. So it is six to five as we head to the ninth inning, and that means that Randy Myers will come out to close the game and he will have his work cut out for him as it will be the top of the order for Pittsburgh. All right, so here we go. Uh, Wally Backman leading things off. Wally is uh, one for three, reached on an error uh, and has singled. Here we go, Myers. Kicks, delivers, 6-10 is going to be a strikeout. Myers gets Backman to chase, and there is one down. The Riverfront crowd on its feet. A few fans holding the it's time to get nasty signs. Here comes uh, Jay Bell. Jay Bell, uh, he has had a good night. He is two for four with two singles. 616 is going to be a pop out to Duncan at second base and there are two down about to be pandemonium here in Riverfront Stadium Andy Van Slyke steps up this is lefty on lefty uh, Van Slyke 0 for 3 with two strikeouts Myers shakes off a sign now he gets one that he likes here is the delivery, 236, and that is going to be a strikeout. Myers with a 1, 2, 3, ninth inning, and this one belongs to the Reds, 6 to 5. All right, what an exciting game, folks. Woo! That looked like, uh, at one point, it was going to be a blowout for the Pirates, um, but uh, the Reds just chipped and chipped and chipped away uh, to get the uh, the win. So uh, it'll be Dibble who will get the win, Myers gets the save, uh, and Landrum will get the loss. Uh, wow, there we go. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, the Nasty Boys did their job uh, after Rio was bounced early. So, uh, again, folks, that was season ticket baseball uh, with the 1990 season. Uh, there's a, a link in the show notes uh, if you would like to check this out. A uh, lot of free downloads there. Uh, you can get the 86 season, uh, playoff teams, 75 playoff teams, uh, all of the rules absolutely for free. Um, and... Uh, Really, really fun game. Thanks to uh, to Clay uh, Dresslock, the designer, for uh, stopping by and uh, and for designing such a great game. Uh, and thank you to everybody who, uh, who joined me here in the chat room. A uh, lot of fun. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Uh, I will be uh, back here next week. Um, I want to say I will be back on Monday, but uh, I will have a, a very, very special show next Friday. Uh, I'm actually going to be playing out a game from the 1966 World Cup, um, a, um, a set that was a, a homebrew uh, and has been played out by players around the world. Uh, and we're going to have West Germany taking on Portugal in the 1966 World Cup final. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun next Friday, 9 p.m. Um, but I will definitely be back at some point. I want to say I'll be back next Wednesday uh, with game two of this NLCS. We've got to keep this going. Uh, Tom Browning will be taking on uh, the 1990 NL Cy Young Award winner um, Doug Drabeck in game number two. So uh, 
until next time hope you guys have a fantastic weekend again thank you for all the support uh hit that like button on your way out if you would like to become a member of the channel you can hit the join button down below for more details but until next time my name's steve get out there have fun play games and i will see you after further review have a good night everybody